At least 5 million people in the UK have admitted to illegally streaming, and it's probably likely that you're one of them. I'll be honest that when I'm not at a game, I just find a stream online. I'm not going to pay £35 for Sky, and then £30 for TNT, and then not even get access to all of the games. The Premier League has tried blocking streams for years, but it clearly doesn't work. The only true way to beat illegal streaming is to follow in the footsteps of Spotify and Netflix, and offer a better, easily available and reasonably priced service for the new generations of football fans. The Premier League is now broadcast in over 800 million homes and if they paid just £2 a month for a streaming service it could generate over five times what the current TV deal makes. The Premier League will soon realise the huge untapped potential of a football streaming service and that's why I think it's inevitable. Times reported last week that the Premier League had shut down over 600,000 illegal streams. Organisations which offered illegal access to watch Premier League matches have today been jailed for a total of 30 years. Sky, the rights holder of the Premier League since its inception in 1992, will now extend until at least 2029. People are becoming fed up with the price point, this illusion that they've got to watch BT, Sky, the Amazon. New deal across four years will be worth £6.7 billion. Pounds, so some are saying wherever they go on holiday, they're finding it easier to watch football than when they're here. Is that right for fans of football in England? Since the Premier League's inception in 1992, they have mainly sold their TV rights in six small packages that have been mainly bought by Sky and another company like BT or Amazon. This has been incredibly lucrative for everybody involved. This graph shows the amount spent on the Premier League TV rights, rising from 43 million in 1992 to nearly 1.8 billion in 2016. However, the latest deals have stagnated, even falling 96 million pounds over the last 10 years. And the last package signed earlier this month was worth less than the deal in 2013 and gives Sky 70% more games. The CEO of the Premier League praised Sky and TNT as long-standing and valued partners delivering world-class coverage. But he must know deep down this is not a good deal. Sky clearly have a strong grip over the Premier League. And even though the sport is growing in the UK, the league are accepting falling domestic revenues. This is because Sky is struggling to turn the modern digital consumer into paying customers, with many just illegally streaming online and then watching the highlights on YouTube. I do feel I'm a good representation for that modern digital fan. I consume all of my content online. I don't even have a TV. I've been an Arsenal season ticket holder since I was 10. And I do stream most of the Premier League games illegally online, but if there was a well-priced digital service, I would definitely consider paying for it. The head of the Premier League has said they've considered launching their own service direct to consumers in some foreign markets. And with the new overseas TV rights deal coming soon, my prediction is that we'll see our first attempt at direct to consumer streaming service from the Premier League in a small foreign market. And then if that's successful, they'll take back control of the TV rights in the UK ditch the 3pm blackout, and then start their own Premier League streaming service in 2029. Imagine a Netflix-style platform that allows you to stream every Premier League game across all your devices. There could be different pricing levels to just watch your team, all the games, or even pay one time to watch a certain big game. I know a lot of people that illegally stream that would happily pay £10 a month to just watch their team's games. There could also be full replays and highlights of any games you've missed, as well as lots of other content like documentaries, behind the scenes footage, and live interviews with managers and players. I really see this as a huge opportunity to create a worldwide hub for the Premier league and engage the new generations. The OTT technology is now good enough and there's been a clear shift over the last few years towards streaming more sports. Just like other forms of entertainment, sport is slowly going digital. Take for example the rise of DAZN. They're mainly focused on combat sports, but also hold TV rights for the Serie A, the Champions League, and the Premier League in Japan and Spain. They've been incredibly successful with their easy to access, affordable service that is slowly proving that the future of watching sports is online. There's also other examples like Apple acquiring the MLS rights and their $100 season pass that is proving very popular. Not only do you get access to every game, but they're creating documentaries and other content that engage and grow the MLS audience. The Premier 
League is also already streaming a lot of football. Look at Amazon Prime's Christmas games, which stream perfectly across devices, and in my opinion, have better coverage than Sky. I really liked the halftime interviews and analytical punditry with ex-managers. Also, in Australia, the Premier League is already fully streamed through Optus and offers the ability to watch all the games on replay, which is great for the Australian time zone. These tech giants are already demonstrating that the new audiences want streamable sports, and I'm sure it's only a matter of time until the Premier League follows suit, but it certainly won't be easy. Turning the Premier League into a customer-facing organisation certainly won't be easy. Their current business model is to just sell their TV rights to other businesses, and it would require a big shift of culture and personnel to pivot their business model. Firstly, they'd have to develop the infrastructure to stream across the world. There have been issues with other sports streaming services, like the NFL Game Pass, where the quality has not been there. But it has been proven with Prime that it is possible, and if there's enough resources and dedication, it can be done. Second, the Premier League would have to learn to market the platform platform direct to consumers. They'd lose the ease of just being part of Sky Sports, and they would have to generate their own subscribers through digital advertising. They'd also have to learn to personalise the broadcast across each country, as people that watch the Premier League across the world are used to their local pundits and commentators, but with millions of football fans across the world that are addicted to this sport. I'm sure it won't be an issue to move them across to a streaming service. Thirdly, there's the issue of removing the consistent revenue from broadcasting. The former director of Sky Sports explains that every club needs money up front, and that's why the certainty that the current broadcasting model is so important, and that they'd give that up if they suddenly move to an OTT model. These are valid points, and if the Premier League is too scared to do it themselves, perhaps one of the big tech giants could come in and spend some of their billions in cash reserves to stream the Premier League. But there could be issues with Article 81 of the European Treaty, which obliges the Premier Leagues to sell their packages to more than one distributor, so it would be impossible for one company to come in and buy the rights to stream all of the games on their platform. This is why ultimately the Premier League has to do it themselves and take control of their own broadcasting rights. I do think a streaming service is inevitable. Football broadcasting has hardly adapted since the 90s, and now the new generations of football fans are digital first, more and more will choose to illegally stream instead of paying for Sky, and domestic revenues will continue to drop. Eventually the Premier League will realise that streaming service is the only way to modernise and to draw in the new generations of football fans. The smart move would be to test its viability in one of the smaller foreign markets. They could then test its success, and then slowly but surely implement it across the world. Most people used to download music illegally and download movies illegally. But then Spotify and Netflix innovated and created modern platforms for the new generations. And unlike those platforms, it already owns all of its own content. The Premier League have to innovate if they want to continue to grow and cement their position as the best competition on the planet. You know, with this whole video, I just wanted to come up with an idea that really would tempt me away from illegally streaming. You know, I'm a huge football fan. I should be paying something Oh, sorry. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's opened your mind about what the future of broadcasting football could look like and how amazing an all-inclusive Premier League app could be. Please consider checking out my last video on why penalties should be harder. I was so, so happy with the response to that one and it's really encouraged me to put extra work into this video and some of the big videos that I've got coming up. I'm going to be trying to upload every two weeks over the next couple of months, bringing you guys more content with high quality videos. So yeah, thank you so much. 